Global Banking and Finance Review is proud to offer another award to Arab Africa International Bank for Best Investment Bank, Egypt, 2015. Recently in the City of London to receive the award, Mr. Hassan Abdallah, Chief Executive Officer and Vice Chairman of the Arab Africa International Bank. Mr. Hassan Abdallah, welcome indeed to London. Uh, lovely to see you here and congratulations on, on the award as well. Well, uh, thank you very much. I'm really glad to be here to receive this prestigious award. Well, it's lovely to see you and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the bank, if I may, and some of the services that you provide. Um, what, what, let's first of all look at Egypt in general terms. What will you see are the, the biggest opportunities and challenges for, for the Egyptian banking system at the moment? Well, uh, as we speak now, of course, there are challenges, in my opinion, everywhere. I mean, the whole world is changing and the challenges uh, are even new. We call it uh, uncharted territories mm -hmm. where you go into places where it's the first time you go. Egypt, we've had uh, uh, a very good economic run and we've been able to, on the macro level, achieve uh, very uh, commendable numbers mainly relating to the major issues facing all economies worldwide, which is employment, uh, uh, of course, in other, in, as in other places, there is um, uh, uh, the budget deficit and uh, in controlling inflation. And we've managed to get all this. Unfortunately, since 2011, some challenge, new challenges have arisen that led to uh, a decrease in some of the revenues, specifically those related to tourism which, as you may know, uh, in Egypt, tourism is, in my opinion, the main competitive edge. I mean, we, I mean I'd mean, invite, I don't know if you've been to Egypt, but please, <laughs> you will find that it is uh, one of the most uh, beautiful, friendly people. And of course, it has both the uh, one third of the uh, whole world of uh, ancient stuff, and it has the best shores and diving sites anyway. But this has been going down in terms of revenue, which has caused some pain in the foreign currency receipts, which we're handling with. As for the banking sector, lucky enough, we were caught at a time where the banking sector has already been inconsolidated and in line with all the corporate governance, compliance, uh, Basel requirements of the international uh, banking sector. So this has led the banking sector to be able to weather these storms and um, despite all the uh, macroeconomic conditions uh, that I'm sure that we are being addressed and uh, provide opportunities as well. The banking sector has been able to stand uh, very strong and provide higher return on equities than in most of the places in the world. So obviously these are the challenges for the banking sector in Egypt, but you have been established since 1964. What would you say have been the changes and opportunities that have developed over that period of time to the present day? Well, a lot, of course. You know, I cannot uh, summarize them in five minutes. However, uh, at a certain stage, Arab African, which is like in the 70s and the 80s, Arab African International Bank has been having a uh, presence internationally in London market, in New York, uh, and in the region in Bahrain and Tunis. It was quite a huge uh, uh, operation at the time, even compared to banks worldwide. However, as you might appreciate, uh, 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 creating a global bank, even the model of global banks now is finding difficulties, creating big banks. So we, could, we were uh, realizing some difficulties in creating value from and competing in, in, in mature markets like London and New York, it's not easy at all. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I, I mean, I've seen that even with other uh, institutions and other banks. So we have decided to uh, 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 focus again on our strength in the home uh, market, where we have grown exponentially. In fact, we can uh, 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 claim uh, with no hesitation that we have been the fastest growing bank for the last 10, 12 years. And from this, we created also a base to serve the, uh, uh, the region. And uh, thank God, we are uh, one of the preferred uh, local banks to do business with international investors and international banks, both in Egypt and the region. And that's more of a model of cooperation rather than competing in their home markets. 
And, and indeed, uh, just expanding on that, yeah, I know that you have a significant presence uh, with branches in, in uh, Egypt, obviously, Dubai, Abu Dhabi and Beirut. Uh, and indeed, you have a local branch expansion within your own country. Tell us a bit about that and the significant investment that you've, you've had to make to, to, sure. to create that. We, uh, um, it's part of our mission uh, to be the gateway for investments into the region. And as you might appreciate, and as it's, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people in the business would understand, uh, uh, there are a lot of barriers to entry in the region for traditional banking. And uh, having a base is very important. And we've decided that this base would be where we have both in Cairo, but also in the Emirates where from the Emirates we are able to serve our clients not only there but in Saudi, in Bahrain, in Kuwait. So this would be, a, 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 we've been beefing this up and it's been showing great uh, uh, results and we'll keep doing that. So there are two uh, main uh, uh, aspects there. First focus is the business between Emirates and Egypt and vice versa. We're, we, 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 uh, we we're, we're, we're quite, have quite a big share there. And then the second is from the Emirates directly to the region around which we are at the moment expanding. Now you, you as, a, uh, as an organization have moved from a, a basic bank to a fully integrated financial operation now. Uh, and uh, you offer asset management, brokerage, leasing and mortgage services to name but a few reading from the list here. How do you think that benefits your clients? Well. We, we truly believe that uh, uh, regardless of, the client has got nothing to do with the regulation, the client wants the service. So we want to provide the service and want to be more of a preferred choice for him in whichever area he goes. The segregation between these uh, uh, activities worldwide is mainly due to regulation, but the service is all financial services. So we tend to be, uh, 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 to provide an uh, integrated and a comprehensive menu of services that includes what you have mentioned. And we, we, uh, we, we tend to focus on the synergies between these so that we can better serve our client and better serve each other. Now, this award from Global Banking and Finance, third consecutive year that you have won this, mm -hmm. how did you get to that extremely excellent position? Well. First, thank you and my appreciation to uh, having this reward. And of course, there is the uh, standard answer, which is true. If you ask anybody, it's because of the staff and dedication of the staff. Mm -hmm. However, I would like to take it a little bit further. We have been able uh, uh, in um, an Arab African International Bank to focus on the mindset of the staff so that they do understand that the competencies need, because the, the, the segregation, if we just go, if I may just retrace a bit, the segregation worldwide between traditional banking and investment banking, again, has been, uh, since Glass-Steagall, has been mainly because of regulation. However, the competencies needed, in my opinion, are more or less the same. It just needs an extra uh, 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 dedication and some more complementary knowledge. What we have done in Arab Africa is that we've based the mindset on look, uh, trying to get solutions rather than problems and trying to think as fast and as professional as an investment bank. I always uh, communicate with my staff and that's no offense to traditional banking but the half uh, a full half empty glass the the traditional banker gets it more difficult to look at the half full the investment bankers doesn't see except the opportunity the half full and tries to mitigate the risks that's the culture that we have it's all about building a culture it's all about building uh, a culture that believes that our clients have to be served and risk is our job however we have to mitigate this risk to the best of our ability and to serve the client uh, to the maximum. And we have been successful in finding innovative solutions to mitigate risks 
and we've been having one of the best quality of assets uh, in, in, in my opinion in the region. Well, moving on from that, let's perhaps now take a look at some of the innovative products and services that you've been able to introduce uh, to give your clients the best possible investment advantages and opportunities. Tell us about that. Fine. If I may break the question into two, which is uh, mainly being the first to do stuff and being the only bank to do stuff in it. So we've been, uh, uh, as I told you, communicating with the staff. What I always share with my staff, we have we have annual communication day where we meet and we talk. What I've always been communicating reflects on what I previously said about the competencies uh, needed and warranted for uh, people to do a uh, good service for clients. And I always uh, mark and explain that finance is no rocket science. And I believe that anybody can copy a product maybe after six months, just about the lead time. However, the ingredients are the same. So we need to always come up with ideas and try to go uh, and, and, uh, and provide what we can for our clients. So as we're talking about which first, which is not innovative, but first, it's very important for us that we have been able to change, for instance, something very simple, but it added a lot of value to all Egyptians, which is extending the working hours of the banking sector from 9 to 1.30 to be 9 to 5. And that was part of where we have been able to attract a lot of clients in the beginning, and then all the banks think, and I appreciate this because we're more interested into the whole banking sector, have followed suit. So now you can bank in Egypt like anywhere in the world. So that's not innovative, but it's just first. Mm -hmm. We were also the first uh, bank to um, uh, uh, go ahead and, and do a corporate bond deal, one of the first securitizations uh, we've done in Egypt on corporate bonds. And uh, of course, relating to our subsidiaries, they've been able also to perform quite a, a good uh, job. As what's closer to my heart is, is the innovation part, which mainly related in uh, innovating products that might be there abroad but have never been done in Egypt. And I don't believe that they have been uh, uh, performed by other banks other than Arab African International Bank, which relate to being able to mitigate risks that clients have relating to markets. For instance, We've been able to uh, write options in currency, the local currency. We've been able to do interest rate swaps and combine it with uh, mortgage products to provide uh, a longer and healthier profile for both the investor or the, the, the mortgage holder and the bank and the developer uh, company who needs this product as well. From what you're saying there, I get the impression that it's pretty important to be first, if you possibly can, especially within your own market. Is that true? Anywhere in the world. First is best. Mm -hmm. It's like even, even when, they, uh, when you read about marketing, first is the strongest word that, that lingers in the, in the... even better than best. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> that's what we've been told. I mean, you're the expert. You no, I think yeah, I, I take your point absolutely. And indeed, I, I was reading uh, in the, the in the Bloomberg uh, Global Syndicated Loaned publication uh, about the, uh, the, the, uh, the the fact that you have a remarkable turnover in volumes of syndication. What does that mean for, for uh, the, the bank itself? Would you say? Well, this positions the bank where it really is, both in terms of corporate credit and investment banking where we come as for several consecutive years as one of the uh, uh, leading banks in the region to provide syndications uh, in terms of size, of course, that's what they call, but not only in terms of size, but also in terms of creativity and adding uh, 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 the options that would make it both sellable and require the client's uh, profile, fits the client's profile. And in keeping with what we've just been discussing, uh, you have introduced many new services over the years. How do you ensure that your, your clients, your customers, are receiving the best possible service? Well, as I mentioned, it is in the mindset of uh, most staff in Arab African. Uh, and this needs a lot of work because, as, as you might appreciate, as I t totally believe, and I believe everybody would know that, it's all about human resources. So 
as long as you have your human resources properly taken care of, and that's not only pay, this is much more than that, and then they will be able to do provide these clients. And we're in direct touch and at various levels of the institutions with all our clients. And we, we share information properly and we do have a lot of feedback from our clients. And myself, I go and we, meet, we try to have a gathering with our clients at least once a year at my level and we can talk and see what are the issues that we can improve because always we like to improve. We always have to improve. And it's good to talk. Yes. It, oh, it's good to communicate. You <laughs> Absolutely. Can, the simple basic things are the major things that make an institution succeed. Communicating within yourself and communicating with your stakeholders. Absolutely. Um, now, you've won numerous awards thanks to, to, to the success story. I'm reading, for instance, that uh, Middle East, uh, you've won the best CSR or, uh, in, uh, according to Euromoney. Uh, you were recognized uh, by the UN Global Compact for the fifth consecutive year, and I am reading this, named Best Practices for 2015. So uh, that's just two successes to name, but many. Uh, why do you think that is, uh, that you have had so many of these awards? Well, uh, I'll, I'll also try to break this question into uh, the awards, which we have which we do appreciate and respect, like the investment banks, which we're talking about. We've also had Best Bank for several years. We've had a lot of th these awards. This all brings uh, happiness to uh, our staff and uh, to myself. And we are all focused on numbers and bottom line and want to increase the return on equity. It really makes us happy. But what really makes us proud and what may really makes us, and this comes up to first again, <laughs> makes us really different, is that we are not only happy, we are happy and proud when we go into the CSR. It's part of the culture. I mean, we were the first in Egypt for sure, and I believe in the Middle East, to create an NGO separate to cater for uh, uh, specific areas in CSR. And this brings not only, as I said, the happiness, it brings the pride. So this is the pride of Arab African employees. When we started this, it was part of your working harder is giving back to the community automatically through Arab African International Bank. So instead of saying, oh, I'm working an hour, uh, one hour or more, you say I'm donating one hour more too, so that I, we achieve. So these are words, in my opinion, they come within all within uh, CSR, which we are, as I mentioned, very proud of. And we've had several awards there. And we have been able to marry the process of CSR with banking in terms of mindset as well. Just to give you an idea of one of the projects that we are looking at, as you might know, that uh, we the, 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 there is a lot of infrastructure, especially in public sector uh, hospitals, which not only need renovation but they are working a very small number of hours. So just by being able to provide a mechanism and a protocol with them to extend their hours by getting more usables, by, pay, by uh, having the compensation for the nurses and doctors, you can leverage, I'm using banking terms, because that's what we do, leverage the already current infrastructure so that you use it and you create a big impact. And we've been able to do create a huge impact, getting waiting lists down to zero in, in, some, uh, uh, in some areas, and in others we're still uh, uh, working on it. And we are taking, this is relating to, uh, the, the we're focused, my, our focus there is health and education. Um, and we are taking it a step further again, to be a market leader, like w w after we've done this huge CSR uh, initiative and the uh, we owe it to Egypt, which is the foundation, a lot of banks followed suit. We're now championing, uh, championing um, uh, uh, a project called Mustadam, which is sustainable, but in Arabic. And we are taking this with all the, our colleague banks and creating, and of course, with international partnerships in order to create uh, uh, a mindset for sustainability and providing um, uh, 
uh, and catering for all your shareholders, your employees, your society, your, your, all the shareholders and stakeholders that, they, that, you, that you have, so that we can have sustainable growth. And we believe that this is something that needs to be focused on not only in Egypt, not only in the region, but worldwide. I have my colleagues who are taking this. They are, they've been pushing me to even try to have built into the accounting standards of banks part of the CSR. Of course, this is a far-fetched, but I believe that one day it should be to reflect that an institution uh, strength is not only based on numbers, but also based on the sustainability of these numbers and the sustainability of the society around it. And without the sustainability of the society, you cannot have your own sustainability as an institution. It, you know, it is obviously a, a, a pretty exciting thing. I know that you yes. mentioned there we owe it to Egypt and, and the plans for that, but obviously you've mentioned many projects there. Um, what do you feel the attitude is to the, the general business community in Egypt? Are they aware of, of these achievements? We are not high profile. However, we have an impact uh, uh, and we, we, we tend to focus on the deliverables I don't know, but you need, because in, in Egypt there is a lot of high profile uh, institutions who have, for instance, commercials on TV and stuff. We don't like this. We, have, we like to have more of a one to one and having our corporates. In fact, our corporates are part of this. And since we started this, uh, uh, for instance, uh, we owe it to Egypt Foundation, we've been in direct communication not only with our uh, 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 clients, but also with other banks. Because our ambition, this is not for us. This is not about competition. It's not about. That's why we call it to, to Egypt. This is not an. Uh, this is not about Arab Africa. This is about being having a proper channel that is sustainable and make sure that your money goes directly to a sustainable project. And Arab African just happens to pay all the 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 the, the administrative costs. Yes. So your money goes hundred percent to there, and you get a report. And we, I mean, I'm very proud of it. I mean, I don't want to. I, I want to keep tell talking about it, and deservedly I, so as well. I thank yeah. you very much. Uh, one, one final question. You're here in London at the moment. Uh, very much in the news this week at the time of recording uh, is, of course, the decision uh, by the British people to leave the European Union, the so-called Brexit, as it's become known. Uh, how do you think that will impact uh, the the situation with the Egyptian economy and banking sector? Well. I've, I've had a couple of meetings with some uh, uh, distinguished bankers here and everybody is on the drawing board. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody really knows the long-term impact. However, as it looks from the face of it short term, it looks like it's going to have big repercussions. This is evidenced by the stock prices of the uh, uh, by English banks, which have shed 25-30%. And then it remains to see what kind of deal that happens between them and this is uh, of course since the British pe people chose that then hopefully it's going to be for their, for their, for their better uh, and um, hopefully it will realize maybe after maybe after this dip you know the J-curve effect it starts going up again. As for Egypt um, uh, the major I mean uh, uh, UK has the uh, one of the biggest uh, FDI in Egypt and uh, I don't believe this will be affected, but mainly there is a lot of oil business, a lot of affected, and there's a lot of profitable business in Egypt. I don't think this will affect uh, any of that. And uh, are the exports to, from Egypt to Britain are negligible, so, <laughs> so they can only go up. As for tourism, I mean, tourism also is at a low point in Egypt for other reasons, mm -hmm. so I don't think this will affect Egypt at all. So I think that the relationship between uh, the two countries if anything, has more, much more upside than downside. And I wish that uh, Brexit turns out to be good for everybody at the end. It's, a, as you say, very much an unknown quantity at of the course. moment, even at this early stage. It's very hard for them. The models are not there to even predict. I mean, people have to, the variables are so many that you have to work on it for some time to come up with something uh, sensible. But the initial reaction has been obvious through the markets. Well, certainly, uh, you've had a, an incredible year. Hopefully, it will continue that way. Thank you so much for coming to London and talking to us today. And congratulations on the award once again, Mr. Hassan Abdallah. Oh, Thank pleasure. you so much for talking to us. It was today. a pleasure, Phil. Thank you very much. And hope to see you again.